in a PO597 engine coolant thermostat heater control circuit. And so a little bonus footage, we'll get into this thermostat heater. And so basically right here, can't hardly see it, I'll get all this intake tube and everything off, but right here is the thermostat housing. Let's see it, kinda. Right on top there's a connector for the thermostat heater. And so we'll go ahead and check that circuit and see what's happening. All right, so now I got the intake tube off from the turbo over to the air cleaner here, and that's just to give us a little better access. So this is the heater element, or at least the connector for the heater and the thermostat. The thermostat is this whole plastic assembly right here. And so the heater's part of the thermostat if we do need to replace it. So I've got some scan tool data pulled up right now, just desired engine coolant temp, and then the engine coolant temp sensor and then the thermostat heater command. You can see we're at 100% command right now. So if we unplug this and we just put a test light on there, we should just have good voltage knowing that this heater's operating. And if not, then we'll check the circuit elsewhere. But if this is good, then we'll go ahead and we'll just check to see if this heater is burnout or what's going on but one piece at a time so first we'll check this all right now i've got my test light hooked up to ground find positive voltage test light's going to illuminate so now we're just down here on the connector for the thermostat heater and we're going to probe this little red white wire and see if we got power there and sure enough we do so now we'll switch it around all right, so now I've got test light hooked up to battery positive right now, so it finds the ground. It'll illuminate, and then we'll go to the other side of this connector, this green wire, which is going to be the driver coming from the PCM, and see if we have a ground, and we do. So the next step is to just take a resistance measurement across this heater right here, and that'll let us know whether it's good or not. I've just got these two wires with some terminals I'm going to shove on here. And we're going to set it to ohms, get a resistance reading through this heater. And so it does look like this heater's burn out. So Looking at the meter reading 23.8 mega ohms and climbing, so it's likely burnt out that heater right now. Even the meter trying to send its own voltage through there is doing more damage right now as we just let it set. So we do have a bad heater, so we're going to be replacing this thermostat assembly, so I guess I'll show you what's involved with that. Alright, and then we've got our replacement thermostat assembly here now this I did go 8c Delco on because I have seen these before for when these thermostat heaters do fail that this will melt and it'll actually push coolant through these terminals and obviously this is a sealed connector it's under the engine bay so coolant can't just leak out of this connector here so what happens is since it's all weather packed it pushes coolant through the entire wiring harness through the insulation of the wires it will push coolant through here into the rest of the wiring harness and give you just a whole host of issues so i definitely go oem with this and that's the reason for that but they do have aftermarket options available as well so any route you want to go and then this is the part number for anybody that wants to grab one of these guys for this and then what I also wanted to do is take another resistance measurement to prove my concept so let me just make sure that the terminals aren't touching so 15.5 ohms is a good measurement for your thermostat heater And once you got the coolant drained and some goodies out of your way here, it's not that hard to actually change this thing out. 
So there's this little clip that holds the upper radiator hose on here. There's no clamps or anything like that. And then right here we've got one hose clamp though that does hold this hose that runs over to the oil cooler that's tucked behind the manifold. So the real trick here will be whether or not I can replace this without knocking the camera over. But we'll see what happens. But this clip will come right up. And the hose, just give it the little wiggle. Just give it the wiggle. Oh, it's a tough wiggle. This is where the camera will get knocked over. Oh, it's a tough wiggle. There, she broke. There we go. She didn't break. Broke the seal, but excellent. Try and make this look easy and see if I can slip some remote hose clamp players on this. Ooh, for a second I did. Leave that connected for a second. I'm gonna zap out. There's three bolts this one, this one, and another one down below this one. Get those out, and then we should be able to twist this housing off of that hose. the new one and just wipe the surface off there you want to check and make sure you got your old o-ring gasket off that mounting surface and we're going to slip this bar back into the hose just like the good lord intended get our fasteners back on here And then if you have common sense, you can torque this down to your common sense torque spec. With my 4-inch ratchet here, it's about oh, many inch-pounds. Oh. It's a very specific noise for this torque spec. No, uh. Or, ah, it's. Mm. Excellent. All right. And now we can put our hose clamp back up on the hose. Done. Grab the upper rad hose here, sneak that back on a little bit, and if you put the clip in it before you snap it on, then when it snaps on, that clip will seat. You don't have to try to push this on and then put the clip in. You don't actually ever have to even take the clip off all the way. That's just something I do. There you go. All right, and so now we've got coolant topped off over there, and we got the car running, and so I've got the data pulled up here, and so we're getting up to operating temperature. We can see that the engine coolant thermostat heater, that's starting to kick on, and we can graph that, and we're starting to get some activity there, opening up the thermostat, and so we know that that's operating how it should. Obviously, there's not an open circuit, or that fault's not present anymore. 
this is able to work and obviously it would just disable it if that wasn't working. So that's all good there. Maintaining our coolant temperature. And then we can go back and we'll do a code scan here. No trouble code, system normal. And so I'm gonna go take it for a spin. And we're running it around. I figured it wasn't really fair for me to just say, hey, it's fixed, guy. Yeah, and so there she's all good. So we got a new thermostat in it. Had a bad thermostat heater. And then we also got the purge valve on it that was opening up, leaking, allowing a vacuum leak. And so that was causing the car to stall when you stop or come to a stop. And sometimes the car would die out. So we got that resolved too. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, you know, if you wouldn't mind, maybe like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed the content. It helps the channel grow a little bit, and I really appreciate it. But thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.